Pennsylvania's forests have not always looked the way they do today. At one point, it was referred to as the Pennsylvania Desert because of the heavy deforestation and over-harvesting that the natural land saw. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the pioneers of Pennsylvania forestry, how they help preserve our forestry heritage and lay a path for the future. Born in Mifflin County in 1839, Joseph Trimble Rothrock developed a love of the outdoors and natural areas at a very young age. He would be remembered as a champion of the conservation movement and the father of forestry in Pennsylvania. Rothrock started his formal education at Harvard in 1862, pursuing a degree in botany. Beginning in 1877, Rothrock served as a lecturer for the Michaud Lectures, financed by the late French botanist André Michaud. Rothrock spoke out on the misuse and mismanagement of Pennsylvania's forests during these lectures, referring to the Pennsylvania desert that had been created by continuous lumber harvesting, forest fires, and erosion. His lectures were widely popular and were the first push that led to the creation of none other than the Pennsylvania Forestry Association in 1886, the first professional forestry organization in the nation. His dedication to his beliefs and our forest's heritage paid off. The Department of Agriculture was formed and he was appointed the first Commissioner of Forestry in 1895. Before his retirement as Commissioner in 1904, Rothrock also became one of the founding members of the State Forest Academy, which would become Penn State School of Forest Resources at Mount Alto. Although Rothrock stepped down as Commissioner in 1904, he still served as Secretary for the Forest Commission. By this time, the state had acquired more than 443,000 acres of forested land as a result of his surveys. Rothrock passed away in 1922 at the age of 83. Of Rothrock, Gifford Pinchot would write, What he did for forestry in this state has never been equaled in the history of our country by any man in any other state. Gifford Pinchot grew up in a wealthy family, attending Yale University and graduating in 1889. In this era, anyone pursuing training as a forester couldn't get the education they needed in the United States. Foresters would have had to travel to Europe for their education, and Pinchot turned out to be the first American professionally trained as a forester in Europe. A few years later, in 1898, when the Division of Forestry was created under the USDA, President William McKinley appointed Pinchot to head up the division, and he would remain at the helm well past its transition into what we now know today as the U.S. Forest Service in 1905. Pinchot would eventually become Pennsylvania's Commissioner of Forestry in 1920. In his new role in Pennsylvania, Pinchot made the push to hire more firefighters and more foresters in the state, with the caveat being that those people should be professionally trained rather than political appointees. During the Great Depression and Pinchot's second term as Pennsylvania's governor, he was one of the first to employ a public works program to get citizens working. Across Pennsylvania, he implemented a large-scale tree planting program to reforest state lands that were left barren after decades of careless logging. President Franklin Roosevelt noticed this and took a keen interest in Pinchot's widely successful program, becoming the model for the Civilian Conservation Corps of the 1930s and 40s. One of his most notable contributions to the CCC era, including the state parks and forest work, was the improvement of rural roads across Pennsylvania, many of which still exist today and are commonly referred to as Pinchot Roads. Myra Lloyd Dock was a Harrisburg native. Born in 1853, she grew up attending private schools in Harrisburg and Lancaster. Although Doc would harbor a love for the outdoors and environment throughout her early life, it was not until she was in her mid-40s that she would have the opportunity to formally study botany, chemistry, and geology at the University of Michigan. Upon returning to PA, she marketed herself as a public lecturer, traveling the state to spread knowledge on native plants, forestry, and beautification. Although she had long advocated for more green space in Harrisburg, it was really her time spent in European cities that inspired her to further push for a healthier, cleaner cityscape. At that time, Harrisburg looked like most cities, dirty, void of greenery with few or no public amenities. In 1900, Doc gave a pivotal speech to the Harrisburg Board of Trade titled, The City of Beautiful, kicking off the City Beautiful campaign. The campaign advocated for better roads, cleaner water, and more green space. 
This movement would turn our state capital from an unhealthy industrial city to a bustling modern metropolis. It was Joseph Rothrock who recommended Doc's 1901 appointment to the state's Forestry Reservation Committee, making her the first woman appointed to a state government position. She, like Rothrock, was one of the founding members of the Mont Alto Forestry School and would lecture on biology there until 1929. The Pennsylvania State Forest Academy started in 1903 with the help from Joseph Rothrock and Myra Lloyd Dock. This academy was the second in the nation and the first in Pennsylvania and would eventually become what we know today as the Penn State Mont Alto campus. Doc passed away in 1945, leaving behind a legacy that is apparent in Harrisburg's Riverfront Park and Pennsylvania's forests. Originally a Massachusetts native, Maurice Goddard eventually found his way to Pennsylvania as an instructor for the Mont Alto Forestry School after graduating from the University of Maine in 1935. After some time, he eventually became director of the school and then transitioned to the head of the forestry program at Penn State's Maine campus and State College. In 1955, Maurice Goddard was then chosen by the governor of Pennsylvania to head up the Pennsylvania Department of Forests and Waters, which became the Department of Environmental Resources in 1971, and then what we know today as Pennsylvania DCNR in 1995. As a trained forester and an academic, Goddard was a big push behind the passing of the Oil and Gas Lease Fund Act of 1955, an important piece of legislation which collected royalties from oil and gas leases in the Commonwealth and reserved those funds for the use in forestry and conservation on state lands, the purchasing of new lands, and other conservation-related activities, the funds from which we still use today. Goddard's often been called the Patriarch of Pennsylvania State Parks, and rightfully so. Throughout his 24 years as a cabinet member in Pennsylvania, spanning the tenure of five different governors, he was the driving force behind the creation of 45 of Pennsylvania's 121 state parks. Goddard was a doer, a man driven to get things done. His vision was that every Pennsylvanian would have access to a state park within 25 miles. If you'd like to learn more about the pioneers of Pennsylvania's forest history, there is plenty to learn. So come on down to the Forest Heritage and Discovery Center. We'll see you soon.